In this video, I'm going to walk you through using the script on my blog, and as usual, you can find the URL to my blog in the description of the video below. And in this script, we're going to uh, add some functionality to SharePoint that we lose uh, when we're dealing with large lists. So just to give you an idea what we're talking about here, um, if I go over to my SharePoint site, I have a list here for orders. And if we look at the list settings for this list, we see that this list of orders has a lookup field to a list called product. So if I look at that products list over here and go to the list settings for the products list, we can see that this list has 6,000 items in it. And it's, in fact, it's giving us a warning saying the list view threshold is 5,000 items. So when you go above that list view threshold, of 5,000 or whatever your list view threshold is, you start to see issues. And one of those issues being if you have a lookup field to that list and you go to the form for that list, you start to see errors like we're seeing here. So I can no longer see what the currently selected product is on the edit form here and I can't select a new one. Instead, I just get this error saying this is lookup column, blah, blah, blah. And uh, this happens whenever you have a lookup field to a list of more than your list view threshold. So what I've done in my blog is I implemented a script that you'd be able to put on this page and allow you to uh, set the values to that lookup field and get that functionality back into your form. So if you uh, go to my blog, you'll see the, the script there. I've got it uh, opened up right here on the page now. And the main thing you're going to need to do is there are a few variables that you're going to have to set so that this script will work in your environment. You're going to have to set the list name to that large list. You're going to have to set the, the name of the um, field in your form that it contains a lookup to the large list. So uh, before you can use this in your environment, you're going to have to go through and set these five variables appropriately. Okay. The next thing you're going going to want to do is upload this script to your site uh, to your site, and I've uploaded mine to my site assets library. So if we go to my site assets library, you can see I have a file here here called order edit, and that is the name of the file uh, that contains the script for my blog. All right. So now let's implement that so you can see it. So we'll go back to this edit form, and I'm simply going to edit this page and I'm going to add a web part to this page and I'm going to add a media and content content editor web part and then I'm going to edit this web part and link it to that script in my site assets library and that was order edit.js so now I'm going to apply that and I'm going to stop editing here so now when I go to edit this item, it, show, it, is, it does a couple of things for us. The first thing you can see is we no longer have that error. It's actually displaying to us what the currently selected product is. And there's a little X next to it. So we could actually delete that selection if we want to. The other thing we have on the right side of the screen here uh, is I'm using data tables to go through and list all of the products. I've even got to where you can drag it around if you want to. So if we look at it, you can see that it says it's showing 1 to 10 of 6,000 entries. So it's actually loaded every single product into this data tables, data tables view, uh, even above that list view threshold of 5,000. That's because we're using that next link from the query string parameter to get the next set of items from uh, the uh, from the list. Now again, I urge you to please uh, edit that REST query in the script and make it return a subset of results from your large list. You don't want to be returning 20,000 items. Uh, you don't want to be doing that much uh, data because it's going to slow things down. It's going to hit your servers. So just please try to limit that number to something reasonable. But uh, you can see here, all of our products are listed. I've got this search box up here, uh, and so I can search for a product. So if I know the product's number, I can type in the number of the product. And you can see that it actually filters those out so I can see the pro products. Or let's say if I want to search by the name, I can just type in the name. So there's several ways you can use this to search for your items. So once I find the item I'm looking for, I simply select it. And I get a little pop-up saying, are you sure you want to select this? I'll say OK. 
and it saves that entry and sets that value for us. So something you may notice is when I made that selection and selected OK, it actually reloaded the page. And this is, uh, and this is important to note because after you make a save using the REST query, I actually have to reload the form uh, to keep the form digest up to date or subsequent saves won't work. So if you're using this method, you need to train your users that, hey, if you fill in other data on that form and then make a change here, it's going to not store that those other updates to your form because it's got to save your selection here. If I wanted to delete this value, all I have to do is press the X. It's going to delete that, reload the page, and we can see that's gone. Now the other thing I've done is I've also given the ability to support multi lookup values. So if I go into my orders list here and I go to the list settings and then go to my product list and say I want to allow multiple values I can then go back to my form and I can select a product and you can see it shows that product and then I can select another product and it shows that product. So we can select multiple items since it is a multi lookup field. And then if I want to delete one of those items, I just click on the X, it will delete it. And there you go. So as you can see, uh, you can set the values of that lookup field to large lists. Again, you want to be careful with the amount of uh, results you bring back from that large list because it will be slow. And you want to make sure that you understand that as you save and update that lookup list field, it will reload that page. And any other changes that were not saved to that page will not be saved. So that's just a training issue there. Like I said, if this is totally unacceptable to you, your course of action would be to create a completely custom form. There's third-party tools out there for it. You can also reach out to your friendly consultants to create one for you. But I wanted to give you guys something that you could just drop onto your forms, get some things done, and at least get you out of a bind in case you've run into that large list issue. Uh, that's all there is to it. I hope you learned something, and uh, thanks for stopping by.